I'll make this autonomous system number 65,000. So this will be my first ISP network in the GNS3 topology. I'll create additional ISP networks if that's of interest to you and perhaps have a separate ISP running MPLS. So again, let's start with this router, which is connected to the internet. So interface gigabit 00, no shut IP address DHCP. Interface gigabit 01, no shut IP address 172.16.1.1 slash 24 mask. As you can see, an IP address has been allocated through DHCP. We can give this device a host name of iOS VR1, because this is the first iOS V router that we have in the topology. And at the moment, I should be able to ping google.com. I need to enable IP domain lookup for that. So ping google.com, that works. So this device can ping Google. I'll create a loopback per our topology slash 32 mask. And then I'll enable BGP in autonomous system number 65,000. The neighbor that will configure is 172.16.1.2 in remote autonomous system 65,000. I'm also gonna redistribute connected networks and redistribute static networks. So show IP BGP. That's what we've got at the moment. I'm gonna create a static default route to 192.168.122.1, which is the NAT cloud show IP BGP, show IP route. We've got our static route in the routing table. We've got our BGP configuration, show IP BGP. So why is the static route not shown in the BGP routing table? And that's because we have to type default information originate. Let's see now, show IP BGP. Notice the default route is displayed in the routing table. You have to use this command because BGP by default does not redistribute the static default route. So again, show IP BGP shows us that. Show IP BGP summary shows us that we don't have a neighbor relationship. This neighbor shows us active but that means that the neighbor is not active. Active means broken. We need to see established. Or on this command, we need to see blank output there. So here's router two. This is a Cisco Dynamips router. So interface loopback zero, IP address. And we'll use a slash 32 mask. Interface F0 slash 0 IP address 172.16.1.2 slash 24 mask. Do ping 172.16.1.1. We can ping router 1, which is great. So router BGP 65,000. Neighbor 172.16.1.1. Remote autonomous system. 65,000. And while I'm here, I'll advertise the or local interfaces into BGP. Remember the mask is not an inverse mask and it has to match the routes in the IP routing table exactly. So show IP route shows us this route in the routing table it's a slash 24 network. So we have to enter the command in BGP as follows. Notice we are receiving a route through BGP at the moment. So can we ping quadruple one? Yes, we can. Can we ping 
google.com. We need to enable IP domain lookup. So can we ping google.com? This router doesn't have a DNS server configured. So IP name server, and I'll specify google.com. So can we ping google.com? At the moment we can't, and that's because the NAT cloud doesn't know about the internal network. So on the iOS router, we need to enable NAT on this interface so that the internal network is NATed. Be careful enabling NAT, you may have a router crash. Mine didn't crash here. IP NAT inside, source, list, one, interface, gigabit, zero, zero, overload. IP access list one permit, or rather access list one permit any. Show IP NAT translations. No NAT translations at the moment, but can router to ping google.com? Yes, it can. So we've got internet connectivity now from this router to the internet. Now, before I continue building the BGP infrastructure in this network, what should I be enabling first? So I should obviously have IP addresses, but what should I have in my network before I run an EGP across my network? And the answer is, I need to run an IGP. So I should be running OSPF in my ISP network. So what I'll do here is I'll just configure this portion of the ISP network and I'll configure OSPF and BGP just on these routers so that we can get our customer network talking to the internet.